Hi, my name is Hong Yuan Liu. I'm a PhD student at William Mary. In this video, I'm going to present our work why GPUs are slow at executing NFAs and how to make them faster. This work was jointly performed with my advisor, Adobe Joke, and our collaborator, 3 Pi. Automata are widely used in different domains, such as bioinformatics, machine learning, network intrusion detection, and antivirus software. They are used for searching patterns across input streams. These years, the applications are getting larger, where they match a lot of financing machines on many input streams. And hence, efficient automata processing become more challenging. There are many architectures to choose from for automata processing. CPU is traditionally used. However, CPU doesn't have enough parallelism, especially for the cases where we have a lot of input streams and a lot of fancy machines. Many accelerators are proposed to support large-scale automata processing. Although there are many to choose from, almost all of them are still not available on the market. GPU, on the other hand, is massively parallel, general purpose, and available almost everywhere. In this work, we focus on accelerating automata processing on the GPU. Deterministic finite automata, DFA, and non-deterministic finite automata, NFA, are two common representations of finite machines. DFA is simple in transition. Only one state is active at a time. However, DFA is not compact because we need more states and more transitions to represent the same pattern. On the other hand, NFAs can have multiple states active at a time, which shows an additional level of parallelism. It is also compact in terms of size, especially for complicated patterns. In this paper, we specifically focus on NFAs. The goal of this paper is to support more efficient large-scale NFA processing on GPU. In this talk, we will show the bottlenecks on GPU that limit the speed of processing NFAs. We propose schemes to overcome these bottlenecks and make NFA processing on GPU much faster. We will start by discussing the bottlenecks of NFA processing on GPU. We show an example of NFA that identifies a pattern. An NFA can have multiple starting states and multiple reporting states. The starting states S0 and S1 in this NFA are shown in hexagons, and reporting state S3 is shown in double circle. Each state has a match set that contains the symbols it can accept. For example, state S0 can accept a symbol B. Prior works use alphabet oriented transition table or its variants to store the NFAs. The transition table is in the GPU global memory. Each row in the transition table is indexed by a symbol. Hence, if the size of alphabet is 256, there are 256 rows in the table. Each column in the transition table is indexed by a state. Each cell in the table shows the next states to be active according to an incoming symbol and the active states. For example, if the incoming symbol is B and the active state is S0, then S1 is active in the next step. However, the table is sparse. For example, in the first column, only one cell is filled. Also, the table stores the same value multiple times. For example, the second column stores S2 and S3 for all rows. The alphabet transition table may be sparse and redundant and hence too big to fit into the GPU ROM chip resources. 
This course is a data movement problem. At the beginning of the execution, the starting states are active. The green states are the active states. A common way we found in prior work to parallelize the matching process is done by mapping the GPU threads to the states. Because S0 and S1 are active, only thread T0 and T1 are active. Since not all states are active all the time, some threads might be idle in a lot of steps of processing the input stream. Investigate this for all applications. We found in all applications, only 3.39% of states are active on average, and at the maximum, 3.05% of states are active. Although this small percentage still include many states, the one-to-one -one mapping between state and thread leads to underutilization of GPU thread. When the incoming symbol is X, S1 can match with X, but S0 cannot. So S1 becomes a matched state. When S1 is matched, it is going to activate its successors, S2 and S3. In the transition table, two cells are fetched, and S2 and S3 are activated. For each symbol, the threads must access the transition table to know which states are going to be activated. Since the transition table is in the global memory of GPU, these accesses lead to suboptimal performance which is also the data movement problem. We use global load transactions to measure data movement, since each thread must read the symbols from the global memory. We consider the ideal case is when threads only load input symbols. Compare the extra cases of two prior works with the ideal case. We found that they use 25 times more data movement and 18 times more data movement, respectively. Now, we'll show how we address the data movement problem. We propose a new transition table, which is compact and tries to use GPU on cheap resources as much as possible. We consider the alphabet-oriented transition table for S0 in here. We convert it to our new transition table. We use a 64-bit variable, outages, to store the successors, which is stored in GPU register. S0 is mapped to a thread T0, so the thread can access the topology of the NFA via registers. We use a 256-bit array to hold the match set. It is a bit set where the accepted symbol is marked as 1. However, the GPU registers cannot be indexed, and hence the match set array is stored in the local memory, which may be ultimately in the global memory. To mitigate the local memory accesses, we propose match set compression. The basic idea of mass cell compression is to convert memory accesses to compute. Consider a state accepting B. We found the zeros and ones are continuous in its mass set. The 256-bit bit set could be represented as two 8-bit variables, start and end. We call these states as complete states. Accordingly, if a state accepts any symbol except B, the B set is negated. In this case, we can also represent it as two 8-bit variables. We call these states are complement states. Therefore, the message checking is converted from bit set checking to a range checking. Finally, 
the transition table structure at zero is like this, where the base set is replaced by two 8-bit variables. This further reduces data movement and also enables putting the transition table to registers. We studied the scope of mesh cell compression among all states in the applications. 70% of the states can be compressed. Next, we show how do we address the poor computerization caused by one-to-one -one mapping between state to thread. This is the activity of states in the evaluated applications. In this figure, x-axis is the activation frequency. The y-axis is the CDF of percentage of non-starting states. Red vertical lines, we found that 80% of the non-starting states are activated for only less than 1% of the process symbols. This implies that many states were infrequently activated but mapped to the threads, leading to inefficient thread utilization. Propose activity-based processing to solve the utilization problem. We classify the states to hot states and cold states, where the hot states are activated frequently and the cold states are activated infrequently. The details are in the paper. We map the hot states to threads and we use a work list to process the cold states where the elements in the work list are dynamically mapped to threads. Here is an example of the activity-based processing. The rest states are classified as hot states. They are mapped to two threads in a thread block. Suppose the current incoming symbol is X. First, the threads are in hot mode. S0 and S1 check if they can match with X. S1 can match with X, and hence its successors S2 and S3 are active. Since S2 and S3 are cold states, two hot to cold transitions are generated. They are pushed to the next cold work list, which is going to be processed in the next symbol. And then the thread turns to cold mode. Each thread is hence mapped to an element in the code work list. Since now it is in the first symbol, no element is in the code work list. So the code mode ends. Finally, we've assigned the next code work list to the code work list and zero the next code work list. Then we process the next symbol Y. First, S1 match with the incoming symbol Y, and then S2 and S3 are pushed to the next code work list. We come to the code mode. The code work list was the next code work list we generated in the first step. Two threads are processing S2 and S3 in the code work list. Two code to code transitions are generated. They will be pushed to the next code work list. We check if they are already in the next code work list. In this case, we found they are already in and hence will not be pushed to it again. Finally, we do some cleaning up as we did in the previous step before the end of this symbol. We show how do we evaluate our schemes. Use three baselines. Infant and NFACGs are prior works on GPU. We also compare our implementations with an AP chip, where we use a performance model to estimate the performance of an AP chip. 
We evaluate our implementations on an NVIDIA Condro P6000 GPU, which is particle architecture. We evaluate 16 applications from different benchmark suites. This figure shows the performance results normalized to one of our baseline, infant. The y-axis is on the log scale. The bars shown in the green boxes are our schemes. Our best scheme outperform an AP chip, for example, in CLAM AV. Our best scheme outperform Prevalk Infant by 26 times on average for the 16 applications, and also outperform NFCG by 5.3 times on average. More details are in the paper. Our artifact is available in the following address. Conclude our contributions in this slide. We found two performance bottlenecks when we process NFAs on GPU. We propose three optimizations to solve the two bottlenecks. We achieve significant performance improvement over the prior works and also reduce the gap towards an accelerator AP. Thank you for attending this online talk. I'm happy to take any questions over emails and the Slack channel. Stay healthy.